RV owners, today I hope to help simplify a common question a lot of people have when they're new to RVs and even some experienced RV owners kind of get these two mixed up, which is the two different electrical systems in your RV. You heard that right? You have two different electrical systems in your RV. You have the 12 volt system and the 120 volt system or the AC system and the DC system. Today I'm going to help break them down, what each one does and how they actually work together to create an enjoyable experience, whether you're plugged in or camping off grid. First, we'll talk about the DC or the 12 volt side of things. Why am I starting with the 12 volt side? Because it is the heart of your RV's electrical system. Your RV does not live without that, whether you're plugged in or not. First, let's talk about what it is and where that electricity comes from. Again, the 12 volt or DC side of things, DC standing for direct current. I'm not gonna get too deep into that and kind of lose you guys there. And where this comes from is your batteries. So your batteries are where the 12 volt power source comes from. And that 12 volt power source being the heart of your RV powers most of what's in your RV. And even the stuff that it doesn't necessarily power, those things still need 12 volt. We'll get into that. So what in your RV runs off of the 12 volt DC system? Your awning runs off of 12 volt DC, unless you have a really fancy Gerard awning on like a class A motorhome. All of the lighting in your RV runs off of the 12 volt DC system. Your water pump when you're using it runs off of 12 volt DC. Most modern refrigerators run off of 12 volt DC. Even your older refrigerators that run off of propane, they still require 12 volts DC to operate things like the control board and the gas valves. These newer ones, these 12 volt refrigerators, is in their name. They run solely off of 12 volts DC. Your slide rooms like this one run off of 12 volts DC. Even if they are hydraulic, the hydraulic pump runs off of 12 volts DC, but all of your cable slides, your Schwintex, your through frames, uh, slim racks, those are all running on 12 volts DC. In other words, running off of the battery. Your RV furnace runs off of 12 volts DC. Yes, it's a propane appliance, but 12 volts DC powers the motor, the control board, and all of the sensors and switches that are inside of this furnace. That's gonna be the same for your water heaters, whether they are tanked or tankless. Even your leveling system or stabilizers run off of 12 volts DC. Again, even if they are hydraulic, the pump that run, the hydraulic pump that runs is powered from 12 volts DC. In other words, your battery. So what in RVs does not run on 12 volts DC? In other words, what is powered by AC? AC voltage or 120 volt is what powers everything else. AC stands for alternating current, 120 volts is the voltage. And I think we all know where that one comes from. That comes from your RV being plugged into a pedestal, but it could also be coming from an onboard generator. A generator produces 120 volts AC. It could even come from an inverter. That's where things start to get really complicated. Before we get to the end of this video, that's where we're gonna talk about how these two systems interact with each other. But real quick, let's touch on what AC powers in your RV. 120 volt AC powers the big stuff. Your air conditioner, like this one, runs on 120 volt AC. Plug-in receptacles, also 120 volt AC. Your microwave is 120 volts AC. Most of your RV televisions are going to run on 120 volts AC. There are some exceptions there. There are some 12 volt TVs out there. You'll find those in a lot of units that are specifically meant for off-grid living that have like solar packages and stuff so they can run directly off of the batteries. Refrigerators, especially if you have a residential refrigerator, could run off of 120 volts AC. There are also some older uh, like three-way refrigerators or two-way refrigerators that will run on either propane, 12 volts, or 120 volts AC. They have different elements in them for each function. We're not seeing a whole lot of those absorption refrigerators anymore, but the residential style refrigerators that you're seeing pop up in a lot of RVs run on 120 volts AC. Again, all of those devices running on 120 volt AC relying on you being plugged in at a campground somewhere, or at least into some type of power source. So now we'll talk about how they interact with each other and how they keep each other alive, and more importantly, why the DC system is the heart of your RV. Now, when I told you that all of your DC stuff runs off the battery, you're probably thinking, well, batteries die eventually, don't they? And yes, that's true. When your RV is plugged in, it's not technically running off the battery. It is, but something's keeping the battery charged, and that's going to be your converter. 
an RV converter is going to take the 120 volts AC coming in when you're either plugged in or on a generator, and it is gonna convert that to 12 volts DC. Think of it as a battery charger. You're using the battery to power all these lights and stuff, but there's a charger constantly keeping the battery going. Think of it as if your phone was never off the charger, it's never really gonna die. And then once you do unplug it, you only have limited time before things start to drain it down. Your converter may be located on the bottom half of your breaker and fuse panel, your power distribution panel here, but you may also find a standalone converter like this one here that is mounted behind there. It could be mounted in the basement. It's somewhere in your RV. You're gonna have to play Where's Waldo and figure out where the manufacturer decided to put it, but every RV does have a converter and that is what is making all of the 12 volt appliances stay on as long as you're plugged in or the battery is charged. And then we have an inverter. This is the one that usually confuses people. A lot of people actually mix up a converter and an inverter. So again, a converter is gonna take 120 volts AC while your RV is plugged in and convert it to 12 volts DC so that you can use everything consistently while your RV is plugged in at the campground. An inverter does that backwards. So if you want things like your TV, some of your receptacles, or even your air conditioner to run while you're completely off grid running off of battery, you can do that with an inverter. Now keep in mind, I'll give you a quick tip here. If you wanna run your air conditioner off of an inverter, you're gonna be spending quite a bit of this because you're gonna need a very large inverter and you're gonna need a very large battery bank. That single little group 24 or group 27 lead acid battery you're gonna have on most travel trailers, it can power an inverter and run a few outlets, maybe a coffee pot for a little bit. It's not gonna do it for very long. Some RVs are coming with more than one battery, some of them coming with lithium batteries, so you'll have a little bit more lifespan. But at the end of the day, it's not as easy as just picking up an inverter and plugging it in your RV and you can just run everything off grid. It's limited to the size of the inverter you buy and the size of the battery bank that your RV already has. But again, it can do it backwards. You could take your 12 volt DC system and the power you have stored in those batteries and you can run things like your outlets and TVs and air conditioners for as long as that battery capacity allows. Now again, I told you that the 12 volt DC system is the heart of the whole RV. Let's talk about why. By now, I'm sure you have the gist of what the 12 volt system and what the 120 volt system are doing in your RV. But when we talked about the 12 volt system, I listed the most critical parts of your RV, your lighting, your slide rooms, your leveling system, your awning. Without the 12 volt DC system, none of those work. Now, we can live without TVs and running hair dryers and stuff in our RV, but if you're going out camping and you don't have any lights, you can't open slide rooms, you can't level, well, you might as well get a tent at that point. So it runs the most critical parts of your RV, but it also assists in running some of the amenities of your RV, if you will. If you take a look at this air conditioner here, you can see right here, this is 120 volt AC that is feeding to the control box that powers the air conditioner. But over here, you see another series of wires. And yes, some of these are for the thermostat, but these are also 12 volt sources. The control board here and the controls in your air conditioner run off of 12 volts. So even if you're plugged into shore power and you have 120 volts coming to the RV, if your battery's disconnected or your batteries are dead and have nothing in them or your converter is not working, keeping the system alive, and no 12 volts is making it to that control board, air conditioner's not gonna work. Just like your propane appliances, if you have a furnace or a refrigerator or a water heater that runs on propane, Again, if the batteries are dead or your converter is not working, creating 12 volt DC, none of those things are gonna work because the controls, blower motors, and all that stuff inside of those devices require 12 volts. Now your microwave, as well as a lot of your 120 volt TVs and your outlets in your RV are about the only thing that are actually going to work without the 12 volt system. So without the 12 volt system, you could plug in your phone chargers and maybe watch TV, but you're gonna be in the dark and you're not gonna be able to open your slide room or level your RV or put your awning out or use your water heater or your furnace or your air conditioner. Now you've seen why I call the 12 volt DC system the heart of the RV's electrical system. Just because there are two of them doesn't mean that they're doing the same job. Your RV could live without 120 volts, hence off-grid. 
it could not live without the 12 volt DC system. Though I will admit the 120 volt AC system definitely helps out the DC system because it's keeping those batteries charged, but as long as you still got batteries, it can survive on its own. I hope you've developed a little bit more of an understanding of the difference between the 120 volt AC and the 12 volt DC side of your RV's electrical system. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them in the comments so that I can help answer them for you guys. In the meantime, if you guys wanna see more RV tech tips, tricks, and even some tutorials with these RVs, make sure you guys press that subscribe button. Thank you.